because I won't post this until then. Okay, we're we're on. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> You all know, you all know Sterling and you know me, and then we have our lovely uh, uh, Andrea. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Sterling. What an honor to be here. Oh, my goodness. I'm dreaming. It's an honor to have you. We had <laughs> mentioned you in one of our videos. Yes, thank Sterling you so gave much. a shout out, and uh, <laughs> it was nice of you to contact and say, hey, I'd love to, to do some work with you guys. So thank today you. we're doing Dead Famous, you guys. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, everybody picks some out of your list of choices. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll start with Andrea. And her first choice is Dean Martin, who I loved. I know. I'm such a huge Dean Martin fan. I just love how, you know, wasn't he just sort of smooth and funny? Yeah, and, and funny. He seemed like a kind man as well. A little bit troubled. I he was, but also when his son died, it sort of changed him oh, forever. Yeah. But what it, I just loved his spirit, so I really uh, wanted to, to tap, tap into in. that. So I pulled some cards on him, and what I see was he, you know what, he really was a very, um, a good man, lots of virtue, right? A good person, loved family, loved his wife, all of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. He actually loved being at home. I got the Dominion oh, card. So that, isn't that interesting? A little bit of a homebody. Mm -hmm. um, but then we see... The addictions. So we've got the debauchery card, the devil card, the ruin card. So he did have a little trouble with his addictions, drinking and stuff. Lately, I heard about that, but I didn't know it was true. I thought yeah. it was fake, but apparently he had some issues. He's such a nice man. I know. And so then I asked him, what, 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 what did he have to say about fame? And he said that he got everything he wanted, total abundance, uh, you know, he became the king, you know, all his wishes were granted. Mm -hmm. But what he did say is that the achievement and the rewards upside down was not um, it. everything. It's love. Yeah. He said love was what, yeah, really, that's what really, they, yeah. really mattered. And so then I just had to ask because, you know, I said, how was your relationship with Dean Mart or sorry, Jerry Lewis? Jerry Lewis yeah. <laughs> Jerry Lewis, how did that go? What did you think? And it was, it was chaotic, not crazy, but, you know, but it was a decision he made. And yes, he really did at the end of the day, enjoy that relationship because it brought a lot, I think, to everyone, all the laughter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, that, and they had their friendship over time. So like he was, yeah. he was, uh, he was fun to tap into very um, wonderful spirits. I really like that one. Yeah. Very Italiano. <laughs> I remember in the later years, he used to frequent, you know, Italian restaurant all the time. He always had his table and, you know, right up to the very end, he was always had a dinner out almost every night. He had his, I remember him at his table. So, yeah. That's wonderful. So oh, he you're still so like good food. Yeah, he did. He did. And good friendship. Yeah. Oh, really? you're so lucky. <laughs> did they ever do a, a movie about him and Jerry Lewis? I don't recall if they did. I, I believe they did. I don't remember the title of it, but I think it was a made-for-TV movie about their lives. I'm almost positive I saw it. Okay, I'll have to look it up. Yeah. That's wonderful. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So um, this is one of my favorites um, that Sterling picked, Christopher Reeve. Oh, yes. Oh, what a lovely man. Yeah. So, you know, what happens very often, because uh, uh, Linda, I think you and I tossed around these lifts uh, the last 24 hours, but a lot of times, even like this morning, everybody was kind of coming around me from this list. Oh, you know, good, I, good. I respect, uh, because they want to communicate. They like to get a, a few words out. So, uh, so Christopher Reeves, one of the things he was telling me was that, you know, obviously he understand his life path very well being on the other side. So obviously the broken neck with a horse accident was, was no accident. And really one of the big purposes down here was all about spinal research, right? Stem cell therapy. Remember, because after that happened, then he started the Christopher Reeves Foundation. And so he was talking glowingly about all the, the research he was able to enable. And I mean, even right now, he's standing around right now. He's very complimentary. By the way, of you two girls, you two women, he says he's very complimentary. He feels uh, he's honored to be in your presence. Wow. You know, he's, he's, oh my God. Real, I'm so in love with him. <laughs> Yeah, he's a he's a real gentleman, a, a very oh. a very soul, 
and um, he actually has his wife Dana with him, right? Remember, he oh, was with fantastic. Dana for a lot of years. Yes. And um, you know, even though he was around, you know, the latter years of his life, he was on a respirator, remember, in the wheelchair and everything. He actually, for him, he was saying, I never really thought twice about it, which is kind of interesting. He felt like I kind of know my purpose, and my purpose is to help a lot of others that come behind me. So, um, so he mentioned all that. And he also mentioned that um, he actually was able to pass on a few things regarding the studio system when he was here. So the way he got handled by the studio system around Superman, that kind of a thing, he actually helped some other actors coming up around him to learn the ropes better. So to get better deals, more fair contracts, that kind of thing was selling me. So uh, all in all, he still looks over a lot of the research hospitals, he's telling me, uh, wow. to try to help with that foundation research. So, uh, you know, he said in the end, I really was Superman. Uh, so, yeah, nice I guy. went to his uh, foundation, and when Dad died, I asked that the fire department, if they instead of sending anything, send money to that to them. Oh, good. My oh, favorite yeah, movie, a... Somewhere in Time. Oh yeah, yeah, beautiful Did a movie. Good job, that. Okay, so um, sorry, you guys, my oven is going up. Okay, so my first choice was Aretha Franklin. Yes. And they're just putting out a series on her. And it's so funny because I, I just saw it on TV. I said, oh, Aretha, they're putting it. She said, I know. And nothing <laughs> but white men are running it. <laughs> she, uh, she selected the actress to play her before she parted. Oh, she did. But she <laughs> said, I think she <laughs> likes that actress in the way, but she's laughing about it. And it's nothing because it's, she, it's like a whole list of executive producers and they're all white. I think Ron Howard and another man are doing yeah. it. Yeah. But um, I think it's on Hulu. And um, I forget the name of the actress now, but she was an American Idol finalist, uh, very oh, famous. Um, very good voice. You get her name right Jennifer, now. Jennifer oh, Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. No, Jennifer Hudson isn't the actress, isn't the singer actress. Oh. Yeah, well, it's she's somebody doing, else I'd never heard of. Okay. Well, she's doing Aretha Franklin. I think it's on Hulu because I saw the, uh, the clip, the trailer for it. Yeah. And she's, uh, she wants everybody to know she's fine. She's still a queen. She just said that. She's kind of <laughs> joking. She's kind of vibrant, you know, and she's really happy to see a lot of the people she knew in her life. And she said, Linda, they're going to tap into some of it, but I went through some stuff, mm. but I came out loving the Lord and here I am. Because energetically, she feels very spiritual. She's doing really good. A lot of people were there and, and happy to see her. There's something with her and her father's relationship that feels like there were some things to get through. But mm -hmm. she she wants everybody to know she's doing real good. And please do watch the series. She just said that. She likes this girl that that she picked. She likes her. Sorry, I'm gonna have to get up in a minute and turn that. What off. are you baking us, Linda? I'm baking. I got I got a friend coming over for lunch. Uh, uh, th th let's see. Here's the actress. What's her name? No, it's not the actress. Okay. Well, anyway, so she said, be sure to watch it. She's very beautiful. She's very statuesque. She could put herself together. She got very tired towards the end. She said to me, it was time for me to go. Mm. So, okay. So now it's, it's your turn. Um, you picked your next one, very interesting, Joan Crawford. I'm just going to step away. I can hear you. And I'm going to turn my <laughs> oven off. I love Joan Crawford. I mean, talk about bigger than life, right? Uh, sure, just, sure. You know, came from very humble beginnings and then was one of the biggest stars in the world. So I, I asked her, what, what's a message she wants to send? And it was fearless, fearless. I think that was her approach. Um, just go and get it. Don't sit back. I think that's great advice. Um, you could just, it was a very strong energy reading on her. And I, it just, it made me giggle, you know, just because just her power was so immense. So I asked her, what did she think about having children and the stories that followed? Because we know that we all know about Mommy Dearest, the book that was written. 
the first two cards that came out were, you know, mother and the children. She really, it just felt like she really did love being a mother. Um, but she needed help. She okay. needed more help than she had. She, she couldn't do it. She felt like a prisoner in her own demons. So things from the past in her present, the way Hollywood was treating her. Right. I think she may have had some alcohol situation. Um, and she was starting to feel old. She really had an issue with aging. Uh, that really bothered her. I well, think I, she that's so funny you said that. I felt that energy just now, like ego wise. Yes. It was very yeah. hard for her to deal with. It was with. very hard for her to get older. So it's unfortunate about the mummy dearest part. She did, she wanted it to go well. I guess it just didn't, um, you know. And then of course I had to ask, how was it with Betty Davis? You know, her, <laughs> her, her apparently arch rival in Hollywood. So she tried to nurture this relationship. She tried to make it work, but this is how she saw Betty Davis. <laughs> Is this devil like she just the sweet devil I suppose that she couldn't quite make it work and uh, she always felt that she was a little bit maybe better than Betty Davis or right. that she was above the bickering and she tried to make it work uh, but I thought that was pretty cute to see Betty Davis pop up as a chocolate cake devil <laughs> yeah, that's funny they, they both had very similar personalities which is probably why they didn't get along yes. almost saw, like yeah. looking in a mirror when you look in a mirror it's hard so yeah, yeah. So that was uh I, I love the fearless part though that's really good really strong woman right right yeah. Well, yeah. i think she came from some not so happy childhood so she probably had to make her way um Absolutely. okay marilyn monroe was your next pick it was um so interestingly enough, you know, a really very smart, intelligent woman when, when she came through and that it's just kind of stepping forward right now, but she had a real intelligence about her. I um, mean, she had a, a very rough childhood. Everybody knows that, you know, a lot of orphanages and tossed around, but you know, she was just telling me that one of the journeys that she really had here on earth that she wanted to get across was uh, the empowerment of women. And one of the things she was concerned with was the imagery that maybe some little girls felt after she left this earth. Like, so it's all about glam and glamor, that kind of thing. But she felt like she wanted, she actually tried to live her life uh, as an empowered woman. And even was talking about a number of like studio executives she took the task and, you know, uh, a deal she walked out on. So she was making that very, very, uh, that point very strong. She also made the point that, you know, she dealt with a fair amount of depression when she was here. So that, you know, there was some confusion as to how she passed. And for me, she said to actually pass due to just, you know, some accidental overdose. So there's some theories that, you know, somebody took her out, but yeah. there was a lot of depression going, there were a lot of depression going on with her at that time. So she made it clear that it was more accidental kind of on her part, but it was part of her life path. Right. And um, the other thing she highlighted to me was that she was kind of unhappy with the legacy of licensing that got left behind. So, you know, licensing everything from wallpaper to, you know, to cars, to key rings. It's like she said, you know, that was never her intent. But in recent years, she was telling me that she feels like a lot of the money coming from the licensing is going to like better causes. Oh, so is there taking care of the foundation is moving the money. So I thought that was interesting for her. The legacy she wanted to leave was one of uh, uh, personal strength and an empowered woman, even beyond the image. Um, so uh, nice, nice lady, actually very nice lady. That's nice. wonderful. Did she um, did she feel satisfied about her mission while she was on Earth, or did she say? You know, she did. Uh, she actually told me that had had she stayed longer, this is kind of interesting. Had she stayed longer, she had her eyes on politics. I believe it because she loved talking to JFK and Robert. And, exactly. Yeah. So that was, I was surprised to hear that uh, because I would never hear any peep out of her about trying to run for politics. But right, uh, right. Um, that but makes total she, sense. Like she, she left the right kind of a legacy. And as more people explore her career and the way she was raised and how she rose above all that, she really feels like she's still a good example, even for like little girls coming up. So Right, right. Okay, my next one is Bruce Lee. Okay. <laughs> Yay. That was weird. Bruce Lee, his son too, was so good looking. 
Uh, so Bruce Lee has been gone for some time, okay? And he, um, he's still over there. He hasn't taken another body. His son is there too with him. You know, he really is vibrationally kind of high up. So he has, he's been dead for a while, huh? Because I feel like his energy source is high. He's um, was very proud of his abilities to control his mind while he was on earth. Because it was more than the physical, it was about the mind. Mm -hmm. And um, he knew when he died, his son was going to die at a young age. He knew it. Oh. And there was no way to inform his wife. I think he really loved his wife too, but he died in the middle of his new beginning. He was really taking off, but he really appreciates everybody watching his films. And he's still as strong as ever. And did he have an aneurysm or something? He had a headache or something? I believe he died a stroke. I think you're right. I because I feel like it came on all of a sudden, boom. And he, he's mm -hmm. telling me they did make a movie about him. <laughs> yep. yeah. They made a movie about me, but it's not about the fame or the fortune. It's all about what's in your heart and who you are. Individually in the spiritual realm, everything is forgiven. We're completely in the present moment. And there's a lot of love they're putting out for everybody. He's saying there's love going out to everybody. So his work has to do with children, believe it or not. It's not helping kids with that kind of stuff. It's helping kids in different nations. He's not in the United States, he's someplace else. So there's a lot of poverty and stuff. He's working with other higher realms to deal with that or help them. He's sending his best. Hmm. Okay, so now your I next one. Linda, I was gonna mention really quickly that you were talking about the brain aneurysm or the, you know, the head problem. And his son passed away in the making of the movie, The Crow. That was an accidental, uh, that was a gunshot. I think that gunshot hit it, the son in the head, mm -hmm. I think. So I, there may be something there with, I think Brandon, was Brandon his son? Brandon, son? yeah. Uh, yeah, so. It was just so tragic. Very tragic. And right. it was, uh, uh, they. I swear how they accidentally mm -hmm. had a real bullet in there, so. Yeah. Go figure. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to know the, uh, I'd like to know the uh, lawsuit that happened with that one. Okay, so, uh, okay, so you have Vivian Lay. Vivian Lay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Vivian. Your eyes Leigh. remind me of hers. Oh my goodness! Thank you. <laughs> uh, obviously, Gone with the Wind, one of her biggest performances. Just as a beautiful woman, married to Sir Lawrence Olivier. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I asked first. How was that relationship? Uh, it was everything. You got the moon and the star and the heart. So it really was. It was a love story. It was a love story. It wasn't that easy, though. We have the mountain. So there was some uphill climb. With this card, it's like she wasn't easy to tame. I think she had some, some issues. She had mental, uh, mental problems. Yeah. And who knows from what from her past, but he was able to somewhat, um, he had the key to, to, comfort her. to comfort her, to make a home, to, it wasn't easy, but it was the relationship that helped her, I think the most, but then it went up <laughs> in smoke, unfortunately. Um, I asked her about her mental health and, and what was going on. Uh, A, a very emotional and conflicted woman. She couldn't find inner peace with peace upside down. Uh, she felt like no one was listening to her. Wow. Maybe she couldn't communicate it properly, but she just, she couldn't find her sanctuary. She couldn't find her peace. And she had trouble understanding her perception, what was, what was going on. So I feel like that was way more towards the end. Um, which is, which is sad, but that's, you know, maybe she's working. I don't know if you can tap into her or not. Maybe she's helping with mental health issues. Um, she probably is. That sounds spot on, by the way. 
And she was drinking too. And if you're a borderline personality or bipolar, you shouldn't be drinking. Doesn't help. Uh, so then I asked her, who is she now? How is she now? And we got universal connection. So in her, now in her wise years, over on the other side, she's understanding that universal connection and she's come to peace and she, she feels better and she understands the bigger picture of things. So she's really, she's really come out of what happened. That's wonderful. She's really yeah. enlightened at that point. Enlightened, yeah. yeah. Lovely, she gentle, beautiful. very she gentle. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. I yeah. felt like she was kind of meek. She was, she could gentle. break easily. Yeah. Okay, now you have Elizabeth Taylor. Ooh. Okay. Um, and this was kind of a fun one because, um, you know, there, there were some times that we kind of crossed paths, like during my career a yeah. bit, uh, both in later years. But um, one of the things, you know, she wanted to come across was she really felt the, the purpose of her life uh, was really about helping people. Now, most people would say, well, you know, she was married eight times or it was a hell of a movie career. But for her, she felt like really in the latter years of her life, like from 1990s on kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or where she really got involved in AIDS research, right? So she was the right. first one to push AIDS research and to try to help people. And she also, interesting enough, uh, to try to help other stars like Rock Hudson. You know, Rock Hudson was the first one to come out. So she was just telling me that she felt really blessed by the things she was able to do with the foundations that she started and really felt that as she got later in years, that was really when her life came into focus, that before right. that, it's almost like being on a roller coaster mm -hmm. from movie to movie, from studio to studio, from marriage to marriage. <laughs> the roller coaster only really stopped when she actually found purpose. Right. Um, she yeah. also was telling me that she's spending a lot of time with Michael Jackson on the other side. Isn't that so, interesting? I wanted yeah. to know about Richard Burton. It's funny you said Michael Jackson. Yeah, and it, it's their kindred souls because they really felt like, she was telling me, they got raised the same, had very similar life paths or early in their years and... Uh, uh, but really, there's actually some good work she's doing with Michael Jackson on the other side and just trying to help a lot of kids, as a matter of fact, kids that are affected by early childhood disease or whatnot. So as they cross over, that's one of the things Liz Taylor is doing right now with Michael Jackson, which I thought was interesting. So um, right. yeah, combining forces, but yeah. um, really nice. And she's actually, um, she was telling me that a lot of what she left behind in terms of assets, yeah. she's been deployed very, very well to help others. Oh, so, awesome. Um, she left behind, um, she told me, I don't know what this is all about, but like a lot of, there were a lot of instructions when she passed, like this is how, this, these are all the foundations that all my jewelry should go to and all the assets, that kind of thing. So I feel like a lot of things were done behind the scenes that the public doesn't even know. Okay. But you know, first foundations that were helped that, um, so I, I, yeah, I congratulate her for that. She did a wonderful job. So, That's wonderful. Um, yes. Yeah. Nice lady. My wow. uncle Earl, the one that from Hollywood uh, had years ago, he told me he knew Rock Hudson and he knew her and her husband at the time, Richard Burton. Mm -hmm. And he said, Linda, they were two of the kindest, nicest people that he had met in the business and he had lunch with them and stuff. He said they were hella funny and really mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. But you hear about all the drama, but yeah. my uncle's perception is that they were really something. Nice. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of media going on all, all the time. So you, it's, uh, it really pollutes the water of truth. Yeah, so, that's yeah. true. That's true. I love it. Thanks. Okay. Um, oh, this is one of my favorites. Gregory Peck. Mm. Uh, I call Adam Schiff uh, Atticus. Gregory Peck. I wonder if has his wife passed? I see a woman standing next to him like he's really happy to see her. I wonder if that's his wife. Anyway, he's very honored to be able to be here today. Mm -hmm. It ended up being quite lovely, lovelier than he thought. He, had, he met some family. And you know, he wasn't very pretentious is what I'm getting. He's not telling me this, I'm hearing it. He was really kind of a basic guy who loved his family, loved his... I see him working with um, plants or something. He's working with the earth. So while he was here, that calmed him. He loved that, um, his role as Atticus. He said it was one of his favorites. 
But the business itself was ba- pretty much dog eat dog. He wasn't quite impressed, but he made good money with it. He made a good living, yeah. but he did have you to sell his toll. What I just heard is he had, he had to, I just heard this, he had to work through a number of like uh, studio cheating scandals, like people trying to hold money back from him. I, I just heard that when you were talking, so. Right, and, and he invested his money enough so he could be comfortable but it was like he, as I think he pretty much retired towards the end because it's like he had some downtime sure. and he loved his time with his beautiful wife. And I feel, uh, I feel like I see, I wonder, I'll have to look it up just now. I just saw this beautiful woman, wonder if that's his wife. So he, he wants everybody to know that although the show business thing was great and he was famous, it means nothing over there. <laughs> That's funny. That's what I'm getting too. Yeah. He says, keep your soul intact. Never, never give away who you are. And back in his day, it was pretty bad. And he feels really bad for the women. Women really went through a hard time that the, what do you call couch that was alive and well, but he was not a manipulator. He wasn't ever trying to get next to anybody. I don't know anybody that knew him, you know, but I do feel him being a very nice energy. And that's I do too. I yeah. Okay, so um, Liberace. <laughs> Liberace. I love Liberace. I love the outrageousness. I love the glitz and the glam over the top. If I could be someone, I'd be that outrageous. <laughs> you know, just a, a rhinestone limousine or whatever he was driving. That kind of stuff is so much fun. So I thought, ooh, let's connect and see what's going on there but I got a different story. So his card he said was survival. He was, he feels like he was always in a state of survival, trying to balance everything. I asked what it, what is, and I'll get to that in a second. So like, what is fame? He said, there's a game. It's a game. Interesting. Back then, whatever it was all the game. Uh, it took a lot of strength, which he didn't have. He wished he would have paid more attention to the details. So we've got prudence and strength upside down. The journalists, the hounding, right? Right. The, the wanting to report on him. We all know he had a private life for a long time. Uh, the Hierophant, so judgment. He always was dodging. That's what that survival is coming from. That, you know, playing that cat and mouse game from the truth, getting out. You know, right. and, and he was struggling by a lot of women, and he didn't want them to know he was gay. Right, he so, for a long time in his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that must he, have been hard to do. Right, and so the, the persecution know. back then to to be who he wanted to be, uh, so it left him feeling like the hanged man. So, fame was not all that it could have been for him because of this survival game he was playing in the background. But he did love his mother; she was obviously a big part of his life and helping him. And he said, I asked what was fame like? Uh, The gourmet lifestyle, these cards were upside down. So insatiated, it's never enough. It's not what fills you. And this is the message we seem to be getting from all the celebrities. From all of them, yeah. Isn't that amazing that all this fame- And he really kind of went out there with it, you know, so. Over the top, which is, I love. (laughs) And then I, so I had to ask, um, the glamour thing. What was, what was, why, like, why so much? <laughs> Got the destiny card. It was just his destiny to be, he couldn't fight it. It's who he, you know, and I, I just love that. And uh, it just I bet you it was past life related. Mm, this overabundance that he did was, was just part of his destiny, part of his calling. And you know what? He got really famous for it. There you go. Made him a lot of money, but he and he was a good artiste too. He was. He had a very good heart. Everybody that knew him in yeah. Hollywood, I mean, he always said the guy really went over and above to help people. Uh, and and people that like Dora, I think uh, Debbie Reynolds was a good friend of his, and just oh. said just a wonderful friend would yeah. you know shirt off his back. Um, right. you know, so. It felt like a nice person, but I was really surprised by the weight of the reading. It felt. You know, like there was this other thing he was living at the in parallel to the fame that not everyone got to see, right? That sort right. of and he couldn't right. really live to be totally yes. right. 
and he always felt he was doing something wrong with it. You know, that's from those days in the fifties, yeah. my uncle was gay, it was always hush hush. Nowadays it's like, whatever. But back then it was always kind of like, you're doing something wrong. Okay. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Judy Garland. Oh. Oh, uh, let's see. So, you know, it, we're, we're seeing a very similar pattern here with a lot of these stars. I noticed that, you know, a lot of them had very troubled childhoods. I mean, Judy Garland, uh, when she, she came through for me, and now, you know, she's kind of stepping forward here during this discussion, is that, you know, uh, she felt like the childhood she had was in some respects very unfair. But, you know, obviously it led to, for her, it led to some kind of fame and notoriety because that stage mom, right, that always pushed her out there. And uh, it was just kind of an awful existence. But um, but she did say that in, that in later years, she really felt like she was able to kind of, um, uh, kind of, you know, demonstrate to people that uh, addiction was something that you could cure and handle. So part of her life journey was all about what addiction was all about and how you go through cycles of rehab and, um, and then kind of learning to love yourself. So really up towards the end of her life, she told me she got to the point where she felt like her relationships were good with her kids, like Liza. Mm -hmm. And she actually got to a place where she really uh, understood what the cycle of life was all about and, and actually how to stop cycles in life. So whether if you were raised poorly, how not to raise kids poorly uh, yourself and how to kind of stop some of those cycles. Um, <clears throat> she also liked the movie that was done, right? So- uh, Yes, yes. Yeah. So, Zellwinger, Renee Zellwinger. Yeah, it's a good movie. Renee Zellwinger, yeah. She was very happy when that came out and, and I think that did win an Oscar. I'm pretty sure that was uh, Best Actress for Renee. Yep. Um, and she felt like, actually she felt in some respects, she got a little vindication from that movie that it kind of really, it it told people a side of her life that was much harder than people. Knew. So she, that was wonderful. And she liked the fact that Renee got blessed with all that. And, uh, but really uh, she felt a lot of people understood addiction much better by virtue of her life. And right. nice lady. Now you got me in the mood to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> it was fascinating to watch that part of her life. I didn't know. Right. The, the struggles she faced I thought you know she was almost broken having to do all these these shows and stuff I mean oh right. my goodness yeah a, okay. lot of, a lot of showbiz uh you know backstage mothering and showbiz right. mothering yeah but you know is she a bright light is she doing good she is you know, um, she's hanging with Jimmy Stewart on the other side. Oh my God, Jimmy. I, yeah, I don't know. There's something that for some reason they almost take up almost like a brother and sister relationship over there. Isn't but that they, something? They, Did they, they know they, each other when they were both? I have no, yeah, I have no idea. We have to research that. Uh, but, wow. but Jimmy Stewart is definitely with her quite a bit of the time. They seem to be working together. Ah, wow, that's great. Okay, so my next one is Jimi Hendrix. Oh. Now, what's interesting is Jimi Hendrix, when I started, you know, I just do this ad lib as we go along, but I did kind of look at Jimi for a minute and I heard as clear as day him saying, I've taken another body. So he's <laughs> already gone back to earth. Okay. And is I feel, now? huh? Is he here now? He's here now, but he's a child. Hmm. And he'll grow to be a very famous guitarist once again. A very kind of even avant-garde, but famous. Um, I don't know why he has to do fame again, because he mm. really wasn't impressed with fame. As long as you didn't interfere with his work, he was cool. But he said, Linda, I hit those drugs hard. And, you know, people warned him, I think. It's like he wasn't listening because that's he got cut off too short. He was awfully young, right? 20 something when he died. I, I was just gonna mention that he, uh, he died at the magic age of 27, like about six other major artists. Well, uh, yeah, Jim Morrison, house, yeah. And, house and, uh, Don't they call that the 27 club or something? Like right, Jim yeah. Morrison. Yeah. Janis cool. Joplin. Yeah, 27, yeah. So um, he just wants everybody to know it's all in the love. He's kind of like that peace out energy, except he's not high anymore. But he's been dead long enough that he understands his journey. 
And it's not about the fame. It's the, it's, he loved doing the work he did. He didn't do it to become famous. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to do this. And I want to be, he could have performed in little shacks. He would have been happy, but he did this work because he loved it. He's laughing. (laughs) Okay. Hold on one second. So he knows I used to love the monkeys. It's so funny. He brought that up. He says, yeah, I used to love the monkeys. You know, I opened for the monkeys. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he did. That was a, a very a strange matchup, Paradise. Yeah, so he just laughed about the opposite ends of music. <laughs> yeah, right. but he's thanking me for asking. But he's already taken another body. He said, "It's interesting. You can hear, you can hear from them who they are. But energetically, he's this newborn, this new young child. He's a male again. So oh. that's what I got." Oh, good. By the way, my experience with people that you know come back to Earth is there's some there's some extension of their soul on the other side that works like a relay point. That's what so I was thinking. Talk, yeah. It's a real it's a relay station. Um, yeah. That's not the that's that's not the first time that's happened to me where I could tell someone already took a body, but I could hear them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so May West, another larger than life. <laughs> I've got a theme going, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, May West, just a wild, vivacious, um, you know, wasn't she one of the first ones to be like the alpha female, you know, the yeah. where she turned mm-hmm. the tables and she mm-hmm. wasn't the femme or the, what do you call it when you're the gentle or the, she, not femme what, Come on up and see me sometime. She yeah, was she, was, she was the power woman, not the, you know, the dainty little wallflower. <laughs> right, right. So I said, what's a message? What's a message, May? And it's, she said, it's all possible for you. So that was her sort of mantra. Like, just go and get it. It's all there for you. I like that. I like that. I said, how was fame for you? Her, she was fun to read. So she had the time of her life. She enjoyed <laughs> The lifestyle, the party, the just hanging out, doing it like her. I don't think she was, you know, we can see some of the other stars had some trouble in Hollywood and contracts and stuff, but she seemed to just live it up. She didn't let whatever there might have been games playing. She was just having a ball. And I said, (laughs) okay, so how about men? What were you really like? What were you really like with men? (laughs) She was a man eater. We got the death card upside down. <laughs> she was the seductress. She was the one in power, right? Like she was Love just. It. That's great. And and then she'd go in for the kill. <laughs> wow. So that was just a lot of fun. And I said, okay, give give me one more card to uh to to express yourself and and what should people feel and and of course, Aphrodite passion. What a perfect card for her. Isn't that so something? Those cards are great, the ones you're getting. It's fun yeah. to see. And so she's just like, va you know, go get yeah. it. You know, live your passion. What a great, great message. That's fun. I have goosebumps. It was so much fun to, <laughs> to sort of get into her energy for a bit. Right. Now, wasn't she the one that helped uh, Cary Grant get off? I think so. On his, uh, She's the one that introduced him to Hollywood. You're right. It's interesting to watch the evolution, even of pictures of Mae West. If you watch her in certain movies and also pick, uh, there are publicity pictures that she really was a very strong woman, didn't have that sexiness to her until later years yeah. when she put on that persona. Yeah, that persona. Uh, yeah, and it, it just really worked for her. But you know, as soon as the filming was over, that persona in public, she had it, but behind the scenes, she didn't, so. Interesting. <laughs> Now listen, Sterling, we're going, um, you're going to do one last one and then I'll do one last one because we're going on 45 minutes. Okay. So you have, do you have your list in front of you? Uh, I have a note over here. Uh, Why don't you pick who you want to do last? Let's do, um, let me see here. Let's do, um, Let's do Jimmy Stewart. Oh, he's right. one of my favorites. And and the reason he was kind of you know nudging me here a little bit was because 
you know, one of the, one of the things, uh, so he, he had a very good career in Hollywood. And right. but I, I feel like in some respects, what he was saying was he kind of got dragged into it a bit. So, mm-hmm. you know, things just kind of fell, fell into him. People like he didn't really want to aggressively go after Hollywood, but kind of Hollywood came after him. Right. But one of the more interesting things was, and I, cause I always appreciate this and kind of the work that we do, the kind of psychic mediumship work. So uh, it's a wonderful life had a theme about with the angel, right? The angel takes him around. Right. So what he, he confided in me was that actually he had a very, he had a lot of spiritual insight uh, when he was here on earth and he actually did believe in the afterlife and he did mm-hmm. believe in angels. So it was like somewhat kind of not accidental that part of his charter down here was to do what's a wonderful life, which is right. many, many, many years. And I just got a cold chill from him. <laughs> wow. He wanted to get across. Uh, I definitely wanted to put that out there because he, he didn't talk about that when he was here in public, but you know, now that was part of his mission to make the concept of angels and living your best life as part of re- kind of the real nature of mankind. So that was a big part of it. Um, nice. Very good guy. And I said, he's working with a number of other stars on the other side to kind of help with their, with their mission on the other side. So, yeah, you know, even though guy. he was Hollywood, he seemed not Hollywood. He felt very grounded to me. Yeah, he, he, for me, he was telling me kind of fell into it, which is, I really have not researched his background, but people, you know, said, look, this is a good movie for you. And he would kind of getting sucked into it and sucked into it and kept doing these movies. But but definitely it's a wonderful life. He felt like was one of the pinnacles of his career. So. Right. And he made good money at it. It's, it's all about the money lots of times too, but he was logical. But what did he think about going into the military and serving as a pilot? That was something. Yeah, well, I mean, he actually, it's, it's funny you bring that up because I, I got some sort of an inference that he saw some things when he was flying in the military that were almost analogous to like UFOs. So okay. he actually saw some things that, you know, were never really talked about, Ooh. but uh, he had much more of a journey th- than people really understand that was really public. So uh, he was a real believer in angels. Awesome. And I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad you picked that. We need to do this again. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so listen, um, uh, my last one, because a lot of people ask this question, it's about the Black Delilah. And people are saying who killed her. So I sort of, between Jimi Hendrix and her, I kind of did a pre-tap in. And what I'm feeling is when I got her, very striking, beautiful woman, um, she's saying everybody knows who killed me. It is correct. He's not alive anymore. It was the doctor. Yeah. It was one that everybody suspected. Yeah. The one that, yeah, she said she got caught up in this. She thought he was going to help her and he'd murdered her out of pure sadistic evil. She forgives him though. You know, she's not there, but she's saying, because everybody's saying, who killed her? No, there's no mystery here. You guys know who killed me. Right. That's what, what a saying. terrible story. That poor girl. It's so sad. And, but she, saying in her desire to be somebody she would sort of sell herself not like a prostitute but sell her own morals or whatever and get get up next to people even for a meal isn't that weird so i guess she struggled to even eat and stuff she needed other men's help and then she got in a very funnel this guy played her he he knew he could play her and uh, it, I feel she died quickly, though. I'm not feeling like he made her suffer. I feel he killed her and then did the rest. I, I, I do as well. I, I okay. it almost it looks to me like a suffocation to me. So is, it it, a suffer- it, is it, it a looks- strangulation or a suffocation? That's what, that's what it looks like to me. Strangulation because it. Happened- I got also got another weird here. I felt like he killed her when she was in the tub. Hmm. I don't know if he said, yeah. why don't you take a nice hot bath and then went in behind her and, and choked her to death. But I felt like she, either that or he killed her and put her in the tub and cut her up. But I felt like she was in the tub. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's the latter because I, I, I get it was somewhere in a house where she got strangled and then however they then dismembered her. Yeah, so okay. there's some sort of a connection to the bathroom there. I saw her in a tub, but I don't know if she's alive or dead, but. That, that guy was a monster. I mean, you don't. Monster, and yeah. everyone knew, but they couldn't prove it, I guess. I'll have to read on it. I'll if he's, I wonder it. if he had connections to like even more tougher people, so no one said anything. I know they did some sort of biography on her or something, and his daughter said he was a perv. He had molested his own daughter. 
And she said she totally believes he killed her. Absolutely. And I do believe it was covered up. So, yeah. you know, these things, it was a mystery for a lot of years. It wasn't a mystery. This, the, the people that had the information were sworn to secrecy because of threats of fear or other violence. So, and in uh, money, the guy had money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was wonderful talking to you guys yeah, on this wonderful Saturday. Yeah. And uh, uh, you guys all be back on with uh, Sterling on Sunday for exactly. our normal Sunday. But let's do this again. Oh, this yes. was a thrill. Thank you so much. And I thanks to everybody to, and all their wonderful suggestions that they wrote on your page. Uh, yeah. What we this got is over 500 and something suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> Lots so, to read on. Well, so you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda and Sterling. I'm a huge sure. fan and I'm totally honored to be here with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> we're honored to have really you. Like you. Honor. Thank you. <laughs> I really like the way you read cards, by the way. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.